Hi, this is Mark Roth. This is Mathematics for Social Justice. Today's topic is a mathematical bead necklace, part two. In a previous video, we showed how to construct a necklace with 56 beads, eight colors, and seven of each color. So every combination of three colors occurs one time as three consecutive beads. So now we're gonna look at a different method uh, invented by Brad Jackson, who's retired from San Jose State University. And we'll start by uh, drawing a mod eight clock. So you got one, two, three, five, six, seven. Now suppose we take three numbers and space them like this. And then we add these three numbers. So if we add one, two, and three, we get six. Now imagine we, t we dial this thing so that this, this, and this, these three selected dots move clockwise one space. So we lose this dot in this position. Instead, we get it in this position. So one, two, three becomes two, three, four. So we have two plus three plus four. Now I don't actually need to add these numbers. I could just make this three bigger. So three plus six is nine, take away eight is one. Um, and I didn't actually add two, three, and four to do that. Um, so basically all I did was, okay, if one became two and two became three and three became four, then they each became one bigger. So it, in, the sum became three bigger. And if I keep on dialing, uh, I'm going to get, after six and one, I'm going to get three bigger again, and three bigger again, and three bigger again. What, now on the clock, getting three bigger is the same as getting five smaller. So that could be two, and then three bigger, and then uh, five smaller, and three bigger. And notice I have now all the numbers zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven without any repeats. So that's true of this spacing, but actually it's true of any spacing. So now this particular spacing was a, a space of one, a space of one, and then a space of six going around to the beginning. So let's look at a different spacing. Let's look at, let's look at this spacing. So we have a space of one, a space of two, and a space of five. So with this spacing, these numbers one, two, and four add up to seven. Now I can dial again. I can make this dot go to two, this dot go to three, and this dot go to five. And again, that's going to get three bigger. So I'm going to get seven plus three, the same as seven minus five is two. Bigger by three is five. Smaller by five is zero. Then bigger by three is three, and then six, smaller by five is one, bigger by three is four. And again, I've got all the numbers zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So every possible spacing is gonna give me all possible answers. So if I, after I do this seven times, I'm gonna have each of these numbers seven times. So I'll have eight different numbers seven times. So basically, if you were to write down all the combinations of the numbers from the set, if you go all the way zero through seven and you choose three and find the sum mod eight, you're gonna get every possible answer seven times. So let's look at the different possible spacings. We've already looked at the spacing one, one, six, and the spacing one, two, five. The spacing two, one, five would be different than one, two, five. And then we could also have two, two, four, uh, one, three, four, three, one, four, and three, three, two. So these are the possible spacings. And remember, each spacing gives you each possible answer, zero through seven, each possible sum um, exactly once. So we would get each possible sum uh, seven times. So then we can notice we don't really need this last number. It's automatic. 
okay? So we can have a spacing of, of um, one, one, and then we could, if we needed to, calculate that the next number would be six because these three numbers would add up to eight in each case. Um, I don't need this anymore. We can build what's called a transition digraph. And digraph just means directed graph. So if I have vertices and I connect them with edges in some way, uh, this arrangement of vertices and edges is called a graph. And if I direct the edges and give them each an arrow, it's now a directed graph. And that's uh, called digraph for short. So our transition digraph will have one, two, and three. And these, these numbers represent spaces. I can go one to two, cross that out, then go two to two, cross that out, and then go two back to one, cross that out, go one back to one, cross that out, then one to three, cross that out and go three to three, cross that out and then go three to one and cross that out. Now, while I'm doing that, I can be building my solution. So I'm gonna draw a seven by eight rectangle. So it's gonna have eight rows. So it's easy to draw eight rows. Just first you have two rows, then four, and then eight. And for seven columns, I need six more vertical lines. So I need one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now I'm going to start with a number. And this number is not a space. It's actually a color. So I'm going to make a bead necklace with eight colors. And one will be one of the colors. Maybe it'll be yellow. All right. So this is not a space, it's a color. Then, um, if you remember the order I went, I went one to two, so this is two bigger, and two to two, so this is two bigger again, and then two to one, so this is one bigger, and then one to, th uh, and then one, one to one, so it's one bigger again, and then it's one to three, so it's three bigger, 7 plus 3 is 10, take away 8 is 2. Then it's 3 bigger again, so it's 5. And then it's 1 bigger, it's 6. And if I keep going, repeat the, the order, it's going to be 2 bigger again. Um, well, that's the same as 0. And then 2 bigger again. And I'm noticing when I go from here to here, it's five bigger or three smaller. It's five bigger or three smaller. It's, uh, in this case, three smaller. So I can actually, this will continue. So I can go down this column, making each time either, either uh, five bigger or three smaller. So I go three smaller, three smaller, five bigger, three smaller, five bigger, and three smaller. And I can do that on every column. Uh, in fact, I'm just going to get a row. This um, is going to revolve. So after 3, 0, 5, I'm going to get 2, 4, 2, 7, 4, 1, 6. After 5, 2, I'm going to have 7, 4, 1, 6, 3, 0. After 6, I'm going to get Three zero five, two seven four, and then one. After seven, I'm going to get four, and then one six three, and zero five two. After two, I'm going to get seven four, and then one six three and then zero, 05. And then after five, 
I have 274 and then 163 and 5. So basically we finished the necklace very quickly. This would be the first seven beads in the necklace followed by this seven, followed by this seven, and keep on working left to right on each row. And this would be the last row. Um, oops, I have a mistake somewhere. So let me, catch, let me fix this mistake. I have two, seven, four, one, six, three, zero, and five. This row looks okay. And then this one was five, two, seven, four, one, six, three. That should have been a zero. Okay, now it's, uh, it's fixed. So let's look for a triple. Let's look for one, two, three. There's one, two, three. And uh, notice in these three columns, we're getting things in consecutive order. We're getting five, six, seven, two, three, four. Um, and seven comes before zero, which is actually equal to eight on the clock. And then one, four, five, six, one, two, three, six, seven, that's equal to eight. Three, four, five, and zero, one, two. Um, so let's try to find some triples. Let's look for, a, say, a zero, four, seven. So here's um, four, seven followed by zero. So the order doesn't count, but we have whatever color four is followed by whatever color seven is followed by whatever color zero is. And again, the order doesn't count. The only thing matters is the combination of colors in any order. So every triple is represented here. A hard one to find would maybe be uh, 0, 1, 5, but 0, but these two are followed by this one. So 0, 1, 5 would be right here. Okay, so this is a second method for building the bead necklace. When I do this with students, this method is really quick. So if they don't do my particular method, which I presented in an earlier video, if they can't finish that in a class period, this is quicker and they could do this instead as an alternative way to build the bead necklace and uh, just to remind you i buy the beads from annabelle's vintage beads in los angeles they'll mail you the beads i i usually buy wooden barrel beads i just finished doing this with my students at Tessellation School in Cupertino, and uh, it's a good lesson.